Yo, so Diddy's alleged drug mule got arrested after some hours of his home being raided by Homeland Security. In a striking incident at an airport in the Miami area, Sean Diddy Combs, purported courier for illegal drugs, was apprehended by law enforcement. Brendan Paul, who is 25 years old, found himself under arrest at Upalaka Executive Airport by officers from Miami-Dade Police and Homeland Security on a Monday afternoon. This incident coincided with police searches at the rapper's residences at South Florida and Los Angeles, linked to an inquiry into sex trafficking. Footage from an officer's body cam shared by NB6 captured Paul dressed in a blue and white hoodie as he was escorted from a border protection facility to a squad car. Paul, a former player for the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team for two seasons, faces charges of felony cocaine and marijuana possession. He's currently detained at Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center in Miami, with his bail set at two amounts of $2,500 each. Brendan Paul, who was once an athlete, found himself embroiled in controversy, able to Sean Diddy Combs' alleged drug mule in a lawsuit demanding $30 million in damages. This legal action, initiated by Rodney Lil Rod Jones against Diddy, marks the fifth lawsuit filed against Diddy since November. Lil Rod's accusation centers on Diddy's purported involvement in the procurement and distribution of illegal substances and firearms, while the connection between Paul's apprehension and the claims within the lawsuit or the simultaneous searches conducted at Diddy's residences remained unverified. Lil Rod's lawsuit contains specific allegations. He asserts his direct observation of Paul engaging in the acquisition and dissemination of narcotics from Diddy and his circle, in addition to attempting or succeeding in transporting such contraband and luggage during flights. These alleged flights, facilitating drug movement, reportedly spanned across Los Angeles, Miami, Virginia, the Caribbean, and London, occurring thrice within the time frame of December 2022, April 2023, and November 2023. In response to the federal raids on Diddy's properties, his legal representative criticized the level of force employed as excessively militaristic, reaffirming Diddy's innocence and his determination to vindicate his name. During the raid on their father, Sean Diddy Combs' Los Angeles home, his son, Justin and Christian King Combs were detained in handcuffs. These are new pictures. So if that are is, these the, there's that people could be in handcuffs his sons. Now. That could be his sons. That could be his sons. Again, if, if that is accurate, I wouldn't be surprised because the allegations put forward in that lawsuit implicated his sons in uh, different criminal so, activities. So these are Christian, who's 25 years old and known in the music world as King, gained fame with his track Can't Stop, Won't Stop featuring Kodak Black, which climbed to the top of Billboard's mainstream R&B hip-hop charts in 2022. The operation was marked by a significant law enforcement presence, including command vehicles stationed at both the Diddy's properties. This criminal probe signifies a significant intensification of the legal troubles facing Combs, who has faced a series of sexual abuse allegations in recent times. Notably, Combs swiftly settled a lawsuit the day following its filing in November where Cassie, a former protege and girlfriend of Combs, and a recognized R&B artist accused him of enduring sexual abuse. The legal claim detailed that he compelled her into sexual encounters with male sex workers while recording the acts. In another case from February, a music producer brought forth allegations against Combs, claiming he was forced to procure prostitutes and pressured into sexual activities with them. Additionally, Combs faced accusations from a woman who alleged he raped her 20 years prior when she was just 17 years old. In response to the raids and subsequent media coverage, Combs' attorney, Aaron Dyer, told Newsweek in an email on Tuesday, there's no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Dyer added, There has been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Following the search of Diddy's residences by federal agents this week, linked to accusations of sex trafficking, numerous celebrities have shared their reactions. Rapper 50 Cent was among them as he mocked Combs on social media. The pair have been feuding since 2007, after 50 Cent suggested, without proof, that Combs was involved in the killing of hip-hop legend, The Notorious Big. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. 50 Cent wrote on X, formerly Twitter. They don't come like that unless they got a case. They in the club hitmaker, whose real name is Curtis Jackson III, illustrated his post with screenshots of the news coverage of the Los Angeles raid. Later that day, 50 Cent took a swipe at Diddy and his friend Jay-Z on Instagram. 50 Cent posted a photo of a milk carton with a snapshot of Jay-Z in place of a missing child seemingly referencing the mogul's lack of public comment regarding the raids on Diddy's properties. Anybody seen Jay? LOL. 50 Cent captioned the image. 
adding that Combs said that Jay-Z ain't answering his phone. LOL. Jay-Z, whose real name is Sean Carter, is a longtime friend of Combs but has yet to publicly comment on the raids or the music mogul's recent legal troubles. Curtis James Jackson III was born on July 6, 1975, known professionally as 50 Cent. He's an American rapper, actor, television producer, and businessman. Born in South Jamaica, a neighborhood of Queens, Jackson began pursuing a musical career in 1996. In early 2000, he recorded his debut album, Power of the Dollar, for Columbia Records. However, he was struck by nine bullets during a shooting in May of that year, causing its release to be canceled and Jackson to be dropped from the label. In 2002, Jackson released the mixtape Guess Who's Back and was thereafter discovered by Eminem and signed to his label Shady Records, an imprint of Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment and Interscope Records. 50 Cent and Diddy being in the same industry, they definitely crossed paths. The over a decade beef between 50 Cent and Diddy started in a 2006 diss track titled The Bomb. 50 Cent alleged Diddy knew who shot the notorious Big, the rapper who was killed in a drive-by shooting at the age of 24 in 1997. In 50 Cent's hit song titled Hip Hop, he said, who shot Biggie Smalls? If we don't get them, they gonna kill us all, man. Puffy, know who hit that ninja? Man, that ninja soft. He scared them boys from the west side. We'll break him off, jump on his so he runs to Harlem to shake him off. Christopher George Latour Wallace, more famously recognized by his stage names, the Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls, or simply Biggie was born on May 21, 1972. He emerged as an iconic American rapper, deeply embedded in the realms of East Coast hip-hop and gangster rap. Biggie is celebrated as one of the most influential rappers ever, renowned for his unique and relaxed lyrical flow that contrasted sharply with the often dark themes of his music. The second time in six months, a star in the often brutal world of gangster rap has been gunned down. This time it was Notorious B.I.G. ABC's Anderson Cooper has the story. On March 8, 1997, Wallace attended a Soul Train Awards after party hosted by Vibe and Quest Records at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. Guests included Evans, Aaliyah, and members of the Bloods and Crips gangs. Later that night at 12.30 a.m. PST, after the fire department closed the party early due to overcrowding, Wallace left with his entourage and two GMC Suburbans to return to his hotel. He traveled in the front passenger seat alongside associates Damien, D-Rock, Butler, Lil Cease, and driver Gregory G. Money Young. Combs traveled in the other vehicle with two bodyguards. The two trucks were trailed by a Chevrolet Blazer carrying Bad Boy Director of Security Paul Offord. By 12.45 a.m., the streets were crowded with people leaving the party. Wallace's SUV stopped at a red light 50 yards from the Peterson Automotive Museum, and a black Chevrolet Impala pulled up alongside it. The Impala's driver, an unidentified African-American man dressed in a blue suit and bow tie, rode down his window, drew a 9mm blue steel pistol, and fired at Wallace's car. Four bullets hit Wallace, and his entourage subsequently rushed him to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where doctors performed an emergency surgery, but he was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. The rapper known as Biggie Smalls was shot several times as he sat in his Chevy Suburban early this morning outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Smalls had been attending a party honoring winners of the Soul Train Music Awards, at which he made an appearance Friday night. What's up, Cali? After the shooting, Smalls was taken to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. It appears as, uh, as he was the intended target of this attack, and he was the only person who was shot. Though no arrests have been made, music industry sources on the West Coast suspect that Smalls' death may in some way be payback for the September killing of rap star Tupac Shakur. He was 24 years old. His autopsy, which was released 15 years after his death, showed that only the final shot was fatal. It entered through his right hip and struck his colon, liver, heart, and left lung before stopping in his left shoulder. Wallace's funeral was held at the Frankie Campbell Funeral Chapel in Manhattan on March 18th. There were around 350 mourners at the funeral, including Lil C's, Queen Latifah, Mace, Faith Evans, SWV, Jay-Z, Damon Dash, DJ Premier, Charlie Baltimore, The Brat, Favorite Flav, Mary J. Blige, Lil Kim, Run DMC, DJ Cool Herc, Tretch, Busta Rhymes, Salt and Pepper, DJ Spinderella, Foxy Brown, and Sister Soldier, David Dinkins, and Clive Davis, who also attended the funeral. After the funeral, his body was cremated and the ashes were given to his family.
Diddy was reportedly with the late rapper the night of the shooting, but was in another vehicle. 50 Cent has since accused Diddy of continuing to profit off the name of the notorious B.I.G., who was signed to Diddy's Bad Boy record label. Through posthumous releases and sampling the late rapper's material in his own songs, 50 Cent has also insinuated on multiple occasions, including as recently as December 2023, that Diddy was involved in the 1997 murder of Tupac Shakur. Authorities have not accused Diddy of wrongdoing regarding Tupac and the rapper called the insinuations nonsense in a 2016 interview. Now, it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect, but I appreciate you as a journalist asking. <laughs> Thank you. Because, you listen, seven years ago, I'd have been like, yo, did you hire somebody to kill Pac? But no, you do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not Which we never believed, by the way. Yeah, thank you. He has also made comments about Diddy's sexuality on numerous occasions, calling him fruity in a 2018 interview, pointing to an instance in which Diddy asked 50 Cent to go shopping, which Combs said in an interview was because he thought 50 Cent needed some clothes. 50 Cent also claimed that he doesn't go to Combs' parties because he'd huggy from the front and the back at the same time. 50 Cent also trolled Combs over their competing vodka brands in 2015, repeatedly tweeting the hashtag Hashtag no puffy juice to deride Combs' Ciroc company. The nigga Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get style. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga, we gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just say? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this nigga, like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is, shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit pile. Pop is a fruit pile. <laughs> Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. If you don't see accident pictures, you'll be like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. I asked 50 about that. And he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Like he said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago. At Chris Lighty's wedding, he told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the what you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the wedding. Oh, oh that's man. a nice gesture. Let's Let me get out of no, dude, take me that's still what a guy says to a nice girl. <laughs> yeah. I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. What the fuck? Yo, I mean, to make like it's just me, man. <laughs> Buffy do some like a little fluffy stuff. Now going you guys, on. why are you with him? Just, hey hey yo, why y'all got? Hey yo, I don't have no beat. With, 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 I don't know why. With, with Fifth, he loves me. He loves me. Y'all really can't have see a beef? it. I mean, y'all can't see. No, we can't. Y'all can't it, see that he loves me. In contrast, in December, Fifty Cent announced his production company, G Unit Film and Television, would produce a documentary about the sexual assault allegations levied against Combs, and proceeds would be donated to victims of sexual assault. Fifty Cent posted an image that appears to be a promotional poster for a documentary titled "Did He Do It?" on Instagram on Wednesday, causing a spike in search for the title. Though the poster's artist, Cody Abdo, confirms to forums it's not a poster for a real show. The beef between 50 Cent and Diddy hasn't been resolved as 50 Cent kept on dissing him regarding his house being raided. Taking an ex, rival rap mogul Marion Shook Knight suggested that there was a bigger issue at play regarding the raids. Marion Shook Knight Jr., an American record producer and convicted criminal, co-founded the previously led Death Row Records as its CEO. Knight played a pivotal role in the rise against the rap's popularity during the 1990s. People, the raids today wasn't for Diddy. Knight wrote on Monday, it was to destroy the incriminating stuff on powerful men. Knight, who appeared to welcome news of the raids, also shared a post regarding the since debunked rumors that Combs have fled to the Caribbean island of Antigua amid the investigation. Aubrey O'Day, who was a member of the group Danity Kane, formed by Combs on MTV's reality show Making the Band, also spoke out about the raids. What you sow, you shall reap. She wrote in an Instagram story post, similar to the one she shared on X. I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we endured. In another Instagram story post, O'Day wrote, Respectively, I've been telling y'all this for two decades, and did anyone listen? No. Danity Kane was formed by making the band in 2005 and later signed with Combs' Bad Boy Records. As well as O'Day, original members included Andrea Fembrace, Juanita D. Woods Woodgate, Don Richard, 
and Shannon Becks. Born on February 11, 1984, Aubrey Morgan O'Day is recognized as an American singer and television personality who gained fame as part of the girl group Danity Kane. Her journey with the group saw highs and lows, including conflicts within Danity Kane and with her then mentor, P. Diddy, leading to her departure from the group in 2008. Despite this setback, O'Day rejoined Danity Kane in 2013, only for the group to disband once again. O'Day and Woodgate were removed from the lineup in 2008 amid tensions between the band members and Diddy. While Danity Kane disbanded the following year, they have since reunited on a number of occasions without any involvement from Combs. Enough is enough, Diddy wrote in a statement posted to X in December. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Diddy's ex Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, shared a statement through her attorney, Douglas Whitger, following news of Monday's raids. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Read the statement. Cassandra Elizabeth Ventura, widely recognized by her stage name Cassie, is an American talent known for her singing, dancing, acting, and modeling. Hailing from New London, Connecticut, her entry into the music industry was catalyzed by her encounter with record producer Ryan Leslie towards the end of 2004. Following their meeting, Leslie brought her on board with his record label, Next Election Lifestyle Group. Cassie and Sean Diddy Combs had a long-standing romantic relationship that was well known in the entertainment industry. They reportedly started dating in the mid-2000s, although their relationship was not publicly confirmed until later. Over the years, they were frequently seen together at various public events, showcasing their partnership. Despite the high-profile nature of their relationship, they managed to keep many details private. The relationship was marked by its on-and-off nature, with periods of speculation about breakups and reconciliations. In 2018, it was widely reported that Cassie and Diddy decided to end their relationship. Following their split, there were no public statements of animosity, and it appeared that they parted ways amicably. In a lawsuit targeting Sean Diddy Combs, allegations of sex trafficking likened Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Coram, to just Lane Maxwell, drawing a parallel to Maxwell's relationship with the late convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Maxwell, who was Epstein's former partner, was sentenced to 20 years in prison in December 2021 for her role in facilitating Epstein's recruitment and abuse of young girls. The legal claim suggested that Karam played a significant role in maintaining an environment conducive to Diddy's alleged activities, insisting that all of Combs' employees, including those in domestic roles, carry narcotics in a fanny pack or pouch for the rapper's convenience. Furthermore, the lawsuit accuses Karam, among nearly 30 other defendants, of arranging for sex workers and prostitutes for Diddy. Christina Karam's professional background, as detailed in her now-removed LinkedIn page, reveals her association with Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment beginning in July 2013, where she initially served as a senior executive liaison. Her responsibilities expanded over time, leading her to the position of Diddy's day-to-day -day manager and later as director office of the chairman at Combs Enterprises. In November 2020, she was promoted to the position of Chief of Staff for Diddy. Haram is an alumni of North Carolina State University, where she earned her bachelor's degree in business and French. Her career prior to joining Combs' team included roles at prestigious organizations such as Burberry, Paramount Pictures, AOL, and Gen Arts. In January 2021, Diddy described Karam's importance to him as she shared a photo of her with his Facebook followers. Meet Christina Karam, Chief of Staff at Combs Enterprises read the caption. Christina, aka KK, keeps everything in life and my business running. She's been my right hand for the last eight years and has consistently proven to execute and get shit done. Don't know how it'd function without her. Back in 2020, Combs also spoke of Karam's importance to him when he took to Instagram to wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday to my ace Boone Coon, my right hand, my day-to-day -day manager that keeps my world twirling, and she's always got my back. He captioned a photo that showed them posing together. She makes sure I smile every day and I don't go into those dark places. Today is your day. It's your motherfucking day. Go KK, it's your birthday. Love you, at Christina Karam. The post appears to have since been deleted from Combs' Instagram grid. Karam also appears to have deleted or renamed her Instagram account. In response to these serious accusations, Combs' lawyer, Sean Hawley, has vigorously denied the claims. 
Speaking of Newsweek, Holly asserted that there is substantial, undeniable evidence proving that the allegations are entirely false. Despite media speculation, neither Diddy nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. We're all waiting for the investigation to conclude and to hear from the authorities on their next action. With this, we've come to the end of this video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more. See you in the next video.